Well, Hello, mate. Can I get a coconut cortado, please? And cortado. and a yep. flat black, please. Any milk with that one? No, thank you. Anything else for you today? Not today, thank you. Right, what is going on guys? JJ Richards here. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Right then, so today we have just pulled up to Falcon Fitness in Froome, and it's been quite a long time since we've actually managed to get ourselves over here. However, I've had a little bit of free time in the diary today, which is perfect timing because they have just received yesterday a brand new Incline Prime Chest Press and also the Prime Shoulder Press. And today, guys, is push day. It was like... Is that the universe telling me this was meant to be? So I'm joined by the wife. Wife, say hello. Wife, say hello. Hello. She, she's, she's glued to her phone. Sorry. No, no, she can't don't multitask. Say that. You, I, no. Everyone's just seen that I've said say hello and you're so like zoned into your phone. You didn't even hear me. No, no, no. It's very important email. I'm just reading The youth Sorry, of guys. today that zoned into the phones. Hey, I just called you youth. You should be saying thank you. Whatever. Right, so we're going to go in there now and I'm going to take you through my current push session. Then what I'm going to do later is I'm going to break down my current training split. But I'm going to tell you the reason as to why I've structured my training split the way I have. So not only am I going to show you what we're doing, I'm also going to explain the reasons as to why I've done it this way. But right now, I'm down for a wee. Just smashed a pre-workout. I'm excited to go and try out the new kit. So sit back, relax. Before we get into today's video, guys, drop it a thumbs up. Don't forget, as always, hit the subscribe button. Let's go and build some big, juicy titties. Okay, so before we get started, I was mistaken. It's the prime shoulder press and the prime lower back row machine that they got. So it wasn't the incline prime press. Like I said, I got confused because the local gym near me just got a few bits. So I got the two mixed up. But anyway, let's get into today's session. So first movement for today was a incline dumbbell chest press. This is probably my favorite movement that I consistently like to do every single push session. And the reason being is because most gyms that you go into have a bench and have a dumbbell. So it's always one of those movements that I do quite enjoy to focus on because I am quite keen to progress in that movement. I do have a number in my head. I would love to get to press the 70 kilo dumbbells for six repetitions but there's not that many gyms near me that have 70 kilo dumbbells. However, Falcon Fitness, being the gym it is, theirs go all the way up to 95 kilograms. So as you can see, on the lead up to my one working set, I just literally start at 10 kilos, start at 10 reps, and then 20 kilos, eight reps, and so on and so forth. So the last couple of sets before my working set, I'm literally only doing like two reps because I don't want to fatigue the muscle. And I don't want to waste any energy. So I want to make sure that all my effort and all my energy goes in to that one working set. So this was the working set. So this was 65 kilos. And this is pretty much the maximum they have at another local gym near me. So it's not often I get to go above the 65 kilo range. And we're trying to get anywhere between six to eight repetitions on this. And to be honest with you, the weight was actually moving quite comfortably. I felt pretty strong, and we did manage to get the eight reps, which was really good. So as you can see here, kind of feel the ninth one, but when it comes to working to absolute failure, that's what failure looks like, when you're trying to push the weight and it does not move. So this right here, we had to use it, the Incline Prime Shoulder Press. So I actually, started from one plate, two plates, three plates, four plates. Now, I'm not going to lie, the increase from three plates to four plates was quite a lot. So this was not a great set for me because ego kicked in and it was pretty heavy. So I literally only managed to get like six reps on this one. So we moved on to a back off set where I moved a more comfortable weight. So we went to three plates. Now I do quite like the prime kit. However, the shoulder press isn't my favorite because 
Normally when you have like a shoulder press machine, it will converge, i.e. like your hands come in. So in that end position, the hands finish above the shoulder, where this one feels like you're pushing out a little bit. It's still quite a nice movement, but I do prefer the Atlantis shoulder press to the Prime one. But all in all, we got an absolutely sick pump on this one. So moving on then to the tricep compound movement. So typically what I'm trying to commit to is doing a close grip bench press. However, because I was training with Lucy and I was starting to get a bit tired, it does sometimes get a bit tedious when we're always having to change the weight stack between the two of us. So this machine is actually really nice because as you can see, it's like a chest press, but they've got a narrow grip handle position. And if you set the seat a little bit higher and draw the elbows into the body, it hits the triceps absolutely beautifully. So again, we just did one maximum working set on the tricep press. And then the one kind of isolation movement we went for today was chest. So this is actually probably one of my favorite chest fly machines I've used because I like the fact that the handles actually adjust and um, depend on obviously your biomechanics, so you're not set in one straight path, you can adjust because the handles move. So on this, we did the typical three sets of 12 to 15 reps. And like I'm gonna mention in the end of this video where I'm discussing my training split in a bit more detail, volume's not crazy high at the moment because I'm not on cycle at the moment, so I am mindful of getting back into this training split. So eventually the volume will increase, but for the time being, this was a juicy little workout. We've got an absolutely sick pump, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I did recording it. I'm trying to kind of get the Christmas tree in the backdrop, so I think this makes it nice and Christmassy, and it's a nice backdrop, but I'm too massive now, so I'm kind of covering it up a little bit. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that training video. So. What I wanna do is I'm just gonna go through now my training split with you guys, but also just to try and explain as to reason why I've actually like structured my training split like this, because people always say like, what is the best training split? And the reality is, is there isn't a best training split. It's whatever is the best training split for you. So first thing you need to consider is how many times a week can you get to the gym? If you can only train twice a week, then maybe an upper lower is the best split for you. If you can get to the gym three times a week, then maybe push pull leg. So it all depends on the person and how often you can actually get to the gym. That's the most important thing. And then obviously, if you're in the situation like I am, where you're able to get to the gym as often as you want to, then it's kind of making that training split specific for the individual. So for example, my main focus is at the moment, back thickness, more arm development, especially through the triceps. So my training split that I've put together, I'll try and see if I can attach it to the screen as well to explain it. So I've got push one, pull one, legs, arms one, push two, pull two, legs, arms two. So that is like my current setup for my training split. And what I typically will do, obviously if things don't get in the way, is I'll do two days on, one day off. So also another thing for me to consider when it comes to structuring my training program is at the moment, I'm not on a cycle. So my recovery capabilities aren't going to be as effective as if I was. So therefore my training volume is actually decreased at the moment. So for example, today we did push one. So there's one compound chest exercise, which we only did one working set. One shoulder compound movement, and we did a back off set because we only actually did one shoulder movement, so two sets for shoulders. We did a tricep compound movement, and then we finished with a chest isolation movement where we did three sets. So not a lot of volume for that session. So that's something that I have to consider when I'm structuring a training split, is my recovery capabilities. So to talk through my split then, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through it. I'm not gonna go through it in massive amounts of detail, but what I'm gonna do is each time I hit a workout, I'm gonna upload the video so you guys can see exactly what that session looks like. So we've got push one, which is what I've just explained, and then we've also got pull one. So if you haven't seen my previous training video, that's where I do deadlifts, barbell rows, one back isolation movement, and two bicep curl movements. 
We then move on to a rest day and then we'll repeat a leg session. So my leg session at the moment is exactly the same for both leg workouts that I do. And the main reason being is I don't need any more quad development. My main focus at the moment is my hamstrings. So we do one hamstring movement, which is a lying leg curl, which will do one straight set. And then the next movement will be a seated hamstring curl, which will be one working set, one back off set. So three sets for hamstrings. Then we do one quad compound movement, followed by a leg extension for three sets and calf raises for five sets. So that is my leg session and that's what I do repeatedly. So I've already hit that leg session twice in this rotation. So after legs, we do arms. So when I do arms, I always start off with a side lateral raise, just because obviously the amount of volume I'm hitting for shoulders on the push day isn't a lot. It just allows me to hit that muscle a little bit more frequently. So what we do is before we start an arm session, we do five sets of a side lateral raise, followed by triceps where I'll do three movements, and then followed by biceps again where I'll do three movements. And those movements all look like three sets of anywhere between eight to 20 repetitions. And again, I, for me, my arms grow better with more volume rather than doing like one straight set and a back off set. So I do need to hit my arms with volume. And then we move back into it again where we do push two. And that again, that's a chest compound. But on that day, we do a working set and a back off set. And then the shoulder compound, again, we just do one working set. So we don't do a back off set for shoulders on the second rotation. And again, a tricep compound. We then do dips. And then again, flies for three sets of 10 to 15. So that's what push two looks like. And then pull two, this is where I'm focused a little bit more on the width and a little bit more lat development. So we do a pull movement where it's going to be primarily a pull down. So we're going to do one working set with one back off set, followed by dumbbell pullover where we do three straight sets and then one upper back row movement again where we do one working set. After that, we'll do rear delts and then after that, two bicep movements again. So a lot more volume for arms. And then after that, we'll do the leg session, which is exactly the same as what I've explained before. And then again, arms. So again, we'll start arms with a side lateral movement. This time it'll be a cuff cable raise, but we'll start off with three bicep movements and then three tricep movements. So that's pretty much my split. And as you can see, because I train at different gyms, I like to get around a little bit. I tend to not always necessarily stick to the same movement and get massively obsessive with progression. When I'm primarily training in the shed, then absolutely the focus will be dumbbell bench press or barbell bench press. So they're the two main compound movements that I tend to do. But if I do train at different gyms and they've got, you know, for example, like a, a prime incline press, I'm gonna wanna use that machine. So I don't always get married to just doing one movement. I do like a little bit of variety in my training and also mixes it up. And if I am training at a different gym, it allows me to use a different machine that's gonna slightly hit the muscle a little bit differently. So that is pretty much my training split at the moment. Again, it's a little bit of a whistle stop talk, so I don't wanna sit here and go through it in bags and bags of detail. But every time I'm hitting one of these workouts, in this rotation, I'm gonna record it and I'll explain it in more detail like I did with the push one session from today. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you are into the kind of training content, then please do drop some comments down below and let me know if this is something that you're interested in. I personally really, really enjoy the training aspect of bodybuilding and that's why I try and do quite a lot of training content. So if you enjoy it and if you wanna see anything else, drop some comments down below, or likewise, if you kind of prefer the vlog style or the full day of eating, then let me know, because I'm kind of keen to deliver the content that you guys want to receive. So give the video a big thumbs up, guys. Don't forget, as always, subscribe. And until next time, peace.